Thanks for being here. Subscribe to Cheating Stories Best, so you don't miss new stories. The wife was packing her suitcase and stepped back for a second, at which point the husband saw inside the suitcase this. Today's story with a similar plot. Enjoy watching it. It was only one time, and if he didn't know, then there's no problem, right? After six years of marriage, Ellie and I were close to seeing all our plans pay off. We had a strict savings plan when we first got married, and now we had finally saved enough for a down payment on a house. We were going to work on filling that house with kids. I'm David Wallace, and I had my own business as a cybersecurity consultant, which allowed me to work remotely. Since I didn't need an office for my business, if anyone asked me about my marriage to Ellie, I would tell them that we loved each other deeply and were committed to each other. Then I would talk about how we shared all our secrets and intimacy and enjoyed an amazing nightlife and unbreakable love. Given our love for each other, our financial situation, and our shared goals for our children, I would bet my life that our future was bright. There were times when we watched other couples fight and get divorced, only to realize that our love and marriage were on another level, and nothing would ever come between us. Delusional thinking is not a deliberate process, but something that convinces your soul and turns into belief. I was a believer. Ellie worked as a regional manager for a national technology company. Her company was growing, and a new vice president was brought in from the Manhattan office. Richard Jones was a young, opinionated graduate who was one of those men who knew more than everyone else and loved to demonstrate his power and position over his employees. That's when my belief system began to be questioned. Since he arrived three months ago, my wife has become cold, short-tempered, and not very pleasant at home. She chalked it up to work stress, but I felt there was more to the story. I tried my best to be a good husband, was patient, brought home flowers, tried to plan dates at her favorite places, and tried to understand her concerns. One evening when she was upset, she told me all about her new boss. She said Richard was a real jerk and made everyone nervous and stressed. I advised her to quit, but she said that she had applied for a transfer to another division of the company and that we needed money for our new house. She said now was not the time to quit and wanted to wait a little longer. Ellie explained that there was a good chance the transfer would go through due to her experience with the company's software and that the corporate office liked her. Her current job required her to visit other branches three times a month, and she now felt that she would have to make one or two more business trips before the transfer would be approved. That was six weeks and three trips ago. There was no transfer, and stress increased at home. This led to her treating me more like a roommate than a husband. I let her know that I was unhappy, but she said we needed to be patient and everything would work out because Richard had become kinder to the employees. Her co-workers thought that perhaps the corporate office had told him about the low morale in the office and he should change his attitude. She also felt that a transfer could still happen. I could tell she was trying to be nicer at home, but she was still harsh with me. She was unwilling to have an intimate more than twice a week, and even then, I felt it was pity in him and not the kind of lovemaking we once shared. On Friday night, she came home and announced that she was going to the corporate office in California for two nights with her manager, Richard Jones. She said she was going to find out about her transfer while she was there. What I didn't know at the time was that her stress was caused by the pressure Richard was putting on her to have a night with him. Ellie was a nicely 28-year-old woman, 170 centimeters tall, thin, with large breasts and the face of an angel. Up until the last three months, Ellie had never given me any reason to worry. I later learned that when Richard began his predatory behavior, she spurned him, which humiliated and hurt his ego and was the cause of the stress she experienced at work. Obviously, this was pure intimate harassment. Why she didn't tell me or her HR department is beyond me and remains a mystery. After Richard realized that his methods were not working, he changed tactics and began to flirt, tease, compliment, and promise Ellie a great future in the company. After several dinners and many conversations about her marriage and nightlife, he convinced her to consider being with him just once and what it would mean for her future. All the stress she was under, combined with the impending act of betrayal, created this devil woman. Apparently, the way she dealt with the impending affair was to blame me and make me out to be the bad guy to justify her one-time betrayal and hide her guilt. We had not had intim or intimacy for the past two weeks and she was not interested in any of my advances. I didn't beg for a night, and I let her know that if things didn't change quickly, we would be in a bad place. 
she promised that everything would soon return to normal and asked for some time to sort out her problems at work. I was in love with her and wanted things to go back to the way they were just a few months ago. I didn't know what to do, but I knew things had to change. So, I let her know that I would give her time until she returned from her trip to save our marriage. Our seventh anniversary was approaching, and I kept trying to get things back on track between us and rekindle her affection before the trip, but to no avail. The day she was getting ready to leave town, I came home early to surprise her with a box of her favorite chocolates that she could take with her on the trip, to show her how much I loved her and wanted our lives to return to their previous course. I knew she had taken the day off to pack and was planning to leave for the airport at 3 p.m. I returned home at noon with a smile on my face, hoping to surprise her and express my love. After I entered the house, I called out to her as soon as I walked through the front door, but to my surprise, the house was empty. I walked into the bedroom and saw her luggage on the bed and her tight dress on the hanger, she always dressed beautifully, was confident in her body, and loved to look fashionable, qualities I always admired. Standing alone in her bedroom, I called her cell phone to find out where she was, but I received curt replies and a sharp greeting. Hello, what do you want? Her voice sounded irritated that I was calling. It hurt after all my efforts, I felt like I was bothering her, the one person she didn't want to talk to. Well, that's a nice greeting. I wanted to know how your day was and what you're doing. Listen, I'm going to lunch with my sister. You already know I'm leaving for the airport at 3 o'clock. Is there anything else you need to know? Shocked by her tone, I simply wished her a pleasant flight and hung up without saying goodbye or telling her that I loved her, as I usually did. I wonder if she even noticed. Hurt and angry, I sat on the bed next to her neatly folded bag trying to figure out what was going on. The way she spoke and treated me was unacceptable, my anger began to flare as I stared at my phone. I wasn't going to wait for her to get home, so I decided to leave the house. As I stood up to leave, Maya caught sight of a purple object in her open suitcase. I had never snooped on my wife before, but for some reason, I reached into her suitcase and found a plastic bag containing a purple item. To my shock, I pulled out an unopened package containing a sheer purple, cute nightgown. Also in the bag were nicely thonged panties and a matching purple bra, as well as a pair of unopened nylon stockings over a purple garter belt. Remembering that she hadn't worn underwear for me in the past two years, I realized she had packed these items specifically for someone else. Suddenly, everything fell into place. I inspected the suitcase more closely and found a box of protections in her side pocket, still in its packaging. That's when it all clicked, the way she treated me, the lack of intimacy, her cold and distant demeanor. Things had changed between us since she started traveling out of town with her boss three months ago. I realized I was holding evidence of an affair in my hands. She packed these things for a trip to show them to another man, most likely Richard. In that split second, I knew I no longer wanted to be part of her game or her cuckold. I went down to my office, took a piece of paper, and trembling with anger, I wrote, Ellie, I hope he likes your hot lingerie. Now it's completely clear why you've changed over the past few months. It's obvious that you don't need me anymore. Don't worry, by the time you get home, I'll be gone and you'll never see me again. I would never have married you if I knew you were cheating. But as they say, live and learn. The only good thing that came out of this is that you'll never be the mother of my children. I'm glad we postponed starting a family. Perhaps Richard can help you in this area. David. Then, I took the stapler out of my desk drawer, carefully tore open the package of lingerie, and stapled the note to its expensive and delicate material. Afterward, I made sure to put everything back into her suitcase without leaving any signs that I had been home. I drove to a local restaurant to be alone and eat something to calm my upset stomach. On the day of her betrayal, I met my sister Jenny for lunch because I needed to confide in someone. Call it guilt or fear but I knew I could trust her to be a good listener. All this stress was driving me crazy, and I needed to get it off my chest before my head exploded from everything I had been through. After we ordered from the menu, I confessed everything and felt relieved when I laid it all out. I felt Jenny's anger as she looked at me like I was crazy. Why are you jeopardizing your marriage because of this? She asked incredulously. In past conversations, you told me he's an idiot and that he's been stalking you for the past few months. Why don't you quit or file an intimacy harassment case? Jenny, I've gotten to know him a lot better over the past month. 
He's going through a difficult divorce. He used to act out and take his pain out on us, but over the last month, he's been extremely sweet. He asked me to be with him just once, and I don't know why, but I agreed. We're going to do it once on this trip, and he promised we'll never talk about it again. He'll also help me advance in the company. So you're going to cheat on David, the guy you've loved since college, for what? A possible promotion? You realize he's turning you into a mistress, right? No, it's not like that. I actually feel sorry for Richard, and I know he just needs this. Besides, David will never know, and we'll be back to normal when I get back. Sorry, David's calling me. Let me answer the call. Hello, what do you want? David, I'm going to lunch with my sister. You already know I'm leaving for the airport at 3 o'clock. Is there anything else you need to know? Fine. As I put the phone back in my purse, I wondered why Jenny was looking at me with disgust. I turned to her and asked in an angry voice, What, Ellie? Did you just talk to your husband like that? That was the rudest thing I've ever seen you do. What's going on with you? What are you talking about, Jenny? Do you even realize how you just talked to David? Are you crazy, Ellie? What are you talking about? I just answered quickly, that's all. You answered the phone call and asked, what do you want? Do you know what my husband would do if I talked to him like that? And the way you ended the conversation, is there anything else you need to know? No goodbye, no I love you, no I'll miss you. How do you think he feels after being talked to like that, Ellie? What's happening to you? I'm concerned about your judgment and the way you behaved. Oh God, I didn't realize I was talking to him like that. I really said that, didn't I? What was I thinking, Jenny? Ellie, I think this affair you're about to start has affected your mind and is jeopardizing your marriage. You told me that you were tired of David complaining that there were problems in your marriage and that you were ignoring him. Look, it sounds to me like you're sabotaging your marriage and treating your husband like crap to compensate for the guilt you must be feeling. My God, you're right. I was acting like an actor taking my problems out on poor David. I have to call him back and apologize. Do you want privacy? No, stay here. I'm calling him on the phone. Damn it, he doesn't answer. Maybe he's busy. He always answers my calls. I'll try calling again. I hope he picks up. He still doesn't answer. Ellie, send him a message. Damn it, he's angry now and I don't blame him. I have to leave in less than two hours. Well, sis, you better apologize and pull yourself together. I don't think what you have planned with Richard is a good idea. You need to stop this nonsense before you ruin everything you guys had such a great time together and you were going to start a family. Think about it, Ellie. I know you're right, but I'm not sure I can stop it now. It's just one time and my family life and work life will get better again. Richard has had so many problems with his divorce and is really depressed. He promised it would just be one time and it would help him because I reminded him so much of his wife. You know he's playing with you, don't you, Ellie? You can't be that blind. No, you're wrong. He's a nice guy at heart and his wife is trying to get full custody of his kids and destroy him with child support. When he opened up to me, I felt his pain and a connection developed between us. I feel like I need to do this, at least once, after all the time we've spent together. Have you talked to him about your own marriage or about how David treats you? Looking down at my hands, after a long pause, I said quietly, perhaps I mentioned something about David's complaints and the fact that we don't have enough intimate. Ellie, you're an idiot, and you'd better pray that David never finds out that you shared your and David's intimate relationship with another man. I have to tell you, Ellie, I think you've already gone too far. If David finds out about this, your marriage will definitely be in trouble. Don't you see how messed up everything is and how you're putting everything at risk? Look, I understand your point of view, and you're right. That's why it will only happen once. Now I understand how I treated David. When I return from this trip, I will make it up to him. He'll never know, and it will never happen again. I'll never talk about it again because it will never be in my head, it will be forgotten. You're really delusional. Are you planning to have a night with another man and believe that once it happens, you'll forget about it? I'm telling you, it will change you. 
It will change the way you think about your husband. Nothing good will come of this. Please think again, Jenny. Thank you for your concern, but I'm a grown woman and I can handle this. I mean, it's just a night, and it's just one time. David will never know, and as they say, no harm, no foul. Well, I hope you know what you're doing, but I want you to remember what I'm saying. You're making a big mistake. Please think about this before you do something you can never fix. You'll forever remain an unfaithful wife, and I hope you can come to terms with that. Don't worry, I'll sort it out, and in two weeks, you'll see a happy David. We'll work on creating our family. I'm sad and I feel terrible about this because I know nothing good will come of this. As your sister, I don't want you to do this. Please cancel your trip, quit your job, and apologize to David for your recent behavior. David is my friend too, and if he ever found out that I knew about this, he would never speak to me again. Thank you, Jenny. I love you and appreciate your concern. I'll think about what you said, but I still need to go on this journey. I'll talk to David and apologize for my bad behavior before I leave this afternoon. David's thoughts over lunch, these feelings were new and unwanted. Sitting at a table at our local restaurant, I began to reflect on the past few months and how my marriage had gone from a state of bliss to complete crap. I had to wipe my eyes several times so that no one would see my weakness and pain. When I first sat down, all I felt was anger, but those feelings transformed into sadness and resentment as I felt the full impact of my loss. The woman I loved and the marriage I lived for were now distant memories. Then, as I thought about my situation, my feelings changed to feelings of humiliation and betrayal. How could she do this to me in our marriage? What did I do to turn her into a cheating wife? I knew I couldn't forgive her. I was never going to be with a woman who wanted to be with another man. My ego could never handle it. I know many of my friends are survivors of the affair and will tell me to forgive her and get over it. Well, that won't happen. Suddenly, my feelings of anger returned when my phone rang and I saw Ellie's number. I wasn't going to answer her calls. The time for talking is over, honey. Your sweet, loving husband is gone. You woke up the monster. Ellie flies off with Richard. Richard booked first class seats on their long flight to the west coast to impress Ellie. However, on the plane, Richard noticed that she was upset when he learned that her husband was not answering her calls and text messages. When she told Richard that she had changed her mind about the whole thing, he quickly caught on and played the part of the offended husband again to get her back on track. He brought her a Bloody Mary and convinced her to relax, assuring her that everything would be fine. Ellie, calm down. It's okay. I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Perhaps he's in a meeting or simply unable to speak. I'm sure he'll call you back. Besides, nothing happened and everything is fine. After we return from our meetings, I want you to take a few days off and spend time reconnecting with your husband. I just wish I had a wife as loving as you. You know, she won't even let me talk to my girls, and it hurts so much. You are a great wife, and I know everything will be fine. Ellie saw tears in the predator's eyes when he talked about his girls, and again fell for his bait. After the second helping, she forgot about her problems and took his hand, trying to comfort the suffering man. That's when he knew he had her and he was going to finally play the stupid game and send her back to her husband. He had worked too hard to let it end right at the finish line. To him, it was all a game, sending women back to their husbands full of his seed was what he lived for. So that the wife understands that she gave herself to another man and at the same time lost respect for her husband. The wife will remember what they did and will keep it in mind when she returns to her husband. What he liked even more was when he met her husband after he had defiled his wife at a business event or some casual meeting. When this happened, it gave him the greatest sense of power. It was a pill and he became addicted to these feelings that made him feel responsible and accomplished. This also made him a dangerous man around these poor, stupid, and gullible women. When they arrived at the hotel, they walked up to the front desk hand in hand. Ellie was a little shocked when she realized that there was only one room and she would have to spend the entire trip with him. As they walked away from the counter, she looked at Richard and said, I don't have a room. Ellie, we talked about this. You and I will be together on this trip and never again. Let's just enjoy this one-time experience like we promised each other. I thought you said it would only be one time, Richard. I'm not sure. 
Relax, Ellie. Everything will be fine. It's just one trip, not just one time. Listen, until we get home, you're my girl. Just this once, pretend that you are my wife, and I promise that I will treat you like the princess you deserve to be. No one will know, and it will forever remain our secret. They checked into the room, and she felt a strong surge of guilt when she saw that there was only one king-size bed. She realized that for the first time since she got married, she would sleep with another man. At the same time, she was filled with excitement. As the guilt disappeared, she felt dizzy from mixed feelings and was forced to go out onto the balcony to get some fresh air. Quietly assessing the situation, Richard put the bags in the closet and joined her on the balcony overlooking the Pacific Ocean. Isn't this relaxing? I booked this room knowing you would love the ocean view. She nodded with tears in her eyes. Yes, it's beautiful here. Richard turned to Ellie, put his hand on her chin, and lifted her face towards his. Looking intently into her eyes, he kissed her softly on the lips. A few seconds later, Ellie kissed him back, which turned into a hot, romantic, passionate kiss. Realizing what she had just done, she gently pushed him away and smiled. Richard knew he was making progress and had no intention of rushing things. He knew that in a few hours, he would be completely inside this foolish woman. He would then have an intimate with her all night long. All this time, he would know that he was desecrating her since her ignorant husband was many kilometers away. He felt a wave of satisfaction wash over him as he smiled back, looking into her eyes. That was nice, Ellie. We have dinner reservations in a couple of hours, and I know you want to get ready. So, I'll head down to the gym for a quick workout and be back in time to get ready. She nodded without saying anything and watched as Richard picked up his gym clothes and headed out of the room. Sitting on the bed, she needed to talk to David and make sure everything was okay. Now that she realized how she treated him, she wanted to apologize and make sure he was okay. She loved him and just wanted this trip to end and their lives to go back to normal. Her heart began to beat faster as she dialed his phone. She prayed that he would answer and tell her that he loved her, but there was no answer. He wasn't responding to her calls, and she knew he was angry about their last conversation. She then sent him a message hoping to improve the situation. David, my dear, I'm so sorry that I treated you like that on the phone today. I had a bad morning and I took it out on you. Please forgive me, and I will make amends when I return home. I miss you so much, and I want you to know that I love you and can't wait for us to star our family this weekend. Please call me. I need to hear your voice. Taking a deep breath, she stepped into the hot shower, shaved her legs, and then washed her hair. After getting out of the shower, she admired herself in the full-length mirror and was excited to wear the new outfit she had bought. For the next 30 minutes, she worked carefully on her makeup and hair. She was pleased with the impressive results for the evening and how her long hair looked dramatic. Forgetting momentarily about her message to David, she focused solely on putting on her new outfit to see how nicely she looked. Her thoughts soon turned to David and how she would wear the same outfit for him when she got home. Richard was in the middle of his treadmill run when Ellie went to her clothes bag and pulled out a short black cocktail dress. It was a daring outfit that she had bought especially for this trip, showing off her beautiful breasts with a daring cutout. Tonight, she was going to be brave and go braless. The short skirt would give her long legs hot look with the new high heels she also bought for this trip. After admiring the dress for a few moments, she went to get her underwear and pulled out several items, including the underwear she intended to wear for Richard that evening. Carefully laying everything out on the bed, she unzipped a new pair of sheer black tights and pulled them up her long, smooth legs over her new thong. There was no need for a bra tonight, so she carefully put on the dress and then slipped on her high heels. After adjusting her dress to ensure her firm, round breasts were covered, she walked over to the full-length mirror and admired the pretty woman looking back at her. She smiled again with satisfaction, realizing how nicely she looked, and once more thought about how much her husband would love to take off this dress and make sweet love to her when she returned home. Then she looked at her watch and realized that Richard would be back in a few minutes. So, she began to tidy up the mess. Returning to the bed to put away the nicely lingerie she planned to wear that night in the closet so she could change when they returned from their dinner date, she picked up the Victoria's Secret package and noticed that it was already open and asked you. Looking closer, 
she saw a piece of paper attached to her underwear. The strangeness puzzled her, and she wondered. She then removed the delicate items and saw a handwritten note attached to the expensive underwear. Still confused, she read the note and immediately froze in fear. Her heart stopped when she read the note, and sadly, her world came crashing down. The reality of what she was doing hit her hard. She was stunned and could not move as she looked at the note. Then suddenly, a river of tears flowed from her eyes, and she fell to her knees, holding her head in her hands. Now lying on the carpet, she sobbed and felt an unimaginable level of hurt and anguish that she couldn't comprehend. Her thoughts now in a state of complete panic, she called David's phone and left a voice message in a trembling voice. David, I received your note. Nothing happened, my dear. I've never done anything. Please forgive me. It was a stupid mistake, and I love you. Please call me and talk to me. I have to talk to you, baby. Trust me, nothing happened. Please call me. When she realized he wasn't calling her back, she left several long text messages and was now rocking back and forth in the large chair next to the bed. When Richard entered the room, he saw a train wreck and knew that something was about to derail his plans. What happened, dear? Do not call me that. I am not your darling, and because of you, I may have ended my marriage to the man I love. You got me into this situation, and now he's left me. Ellie, calm down. What are you talking about? Richard saw a note on the bed that Ellie was pointing at. A smile appeared on his face as he read it, and he felt that wonderful feeling of satisfaction again, fooling her husband's head. That's what he lived for, seducing wives and ruining their lives. It all traced back to his childhood when his father had left his mother for another woman. Somehow, that experience had warped him in the worst possible way. In his sick mind, it didn't even matter if he had her, he already had what he wanted. Taking her now would just be a bonus. So, he would let her cry and then convince her that since her husband already thought she had a night with him, they might as well do it and enjoy it. He knew it wouldn't be an easy sell, but it was his gift, or at least that's what he convinced himself. His past experiences with cheating wives gave him confidence in his skills. But Ellie didn't want to play this game anymore. She took off her heels and dress in front of Richard, completely ignoring his presence. He was sure that she was about to pounce on him and get what she wanted. His heart raced with anticipation when he saw her amazing body. He stood up and took off his pants, waiting for Ellie to come and enjoy his manhood. When Ellie saw what he was doing, she just laughed. You're crazy if you think I'll ever touch you again. I have to go home to my husband and fix this mess. Richard became angry when he realized that he wouldn't get what he expected and spoke in a tone that she had never heard. Is it my fault, you stupid woman? You're the one who agreed to this. You left your husband and agreed to have an intimate with me. I never forced you, and you made this choice yourself. Look at the outfit you just wore for our special night. It practically begged, please take me. Admit it, if you really loved your husband, you would never agree to become my plaything for the weekend. You idiot! How dare you talk to me like that? You're just a despicable jerk, and I want nothing to do with you. You've ruined my happy marriage, and I have no idea how to get David to forgive me and take me back. Hell, if the situation were reversed, I would have divorced him and made his life a living hell. I hate you and what you did. Enraged, Richard blurted out, of course, it's all my fault. That kiss you gave me an hour ago tells the truth. You loved it and knew you wanted more. You wanted me to ravish you hard and turn your world upside down. You know it. Ellie looked shocked by his outburst as he continued. Just admit it and stop accusing me of wanting to cheat on the man you say you love. You'll never convince me that you loved him and so easily agreed to cheat on him. You're just like all the other women, you want to have some fun on the side. The main thing is not to get caught. Once you are caught, you blame the man who seduced you. Well, princess, you would never have let me seduce you, take you on a cross-country trip, and agree to a night of intim with me if you truly loved your husband. You didn't even mind sharing the same room and sleeping with me. Yes, you must really love your husband. I can't imagine what you would do if you didn't love the poor guy. Trust me, he'll be lucky if he finds out now that you're an unfaithful wife and can't be trusted before you start having kids. His words broke her soul. 
she knew that he was right and that she had made the choice. She blamed him for everything but knew that she could have said no at any moment. Even her sister had warned her, but she decided to leave her husband and be with Richard. At that moment, she wasn't sure what hurt more, the fact that she realized Richard was right about her or how much she had hurt her husband. Filled with remorse and guilt, she quickly gathered her things and went down to the lobby to see if the concierge could help her. To spare her the trouble of blushing at home, she needed to go home and tell David how much she loved him and that nothing had happened. After talking on the phone for 20 minutes, it turned out that there were no empty seats on any of the return flights that evening. She was stuck in San Diego until the morning when she could catch a flight home, arriving around 6 p.m. It was too late, but with no options, she asked them to make a change. Then she realized that she did not have a hotel room and needed somewhere to spend the night. The concierge, seeing how upset she was, tried to help her. She told her that she had found a room, and if she gave her a credit card, the room key would be ready in a few minutes. After she gave her the credit card, she sat alone and thought about the last three months that David had described in her note. She realized that she had actually been a terrible wife to David, treating him horribly out of guilt, taking out her frustration and stress on the man she loved. When she saw the concierge's face, she became worried. Sorry, Mrs. Wallace, your card has been declined. Do you have another card? Cancelled? My God, this can't be true. Here, try this one. She realized David had cancelled their joint cards when the other two cards didn't work. She panicked and tried to figure out what to do. There was no way she was going back to Richard's room. She would rather stay up all night and wait until morning. With no other choice, she swallowed her pride and called her sister. Hello? Hi Jenny, sorry to bother you. Is everything okay? Little sister, what's happened? Ellie burst into tears immediately after Jenny answered the phone. I should have listened to you, but I didn't. David found out about my trip and left a note in my bag saying he's done with me. I'm stuck here and trying to get home. He won't answer my calls or texts, and I think he cancelled our credit cards. I can't even get a room. Could you use your credit card to pay for a hotel room, and I'll pay you back when I get back? Damn it, Ellie. You're supposed to be the smart sister, but you've definitely not been very bright lately. Of course, I'll help you. She called her sister back an hour later. Jenny, thank you for helping your idiot sister. I was able to rent a room for the night. I'll return home on the morning flight. Do you think he'll forgive me? I'm not sure, sister. Have you heard anything from him? No, but I left him several messages and told him that nothing happened. Well, good luck. The fact that he knew what you were going to do when you went on the trip is not a good sign. Keep trying to contact him and beg him to forgive you if you want him to come back. David's Nightmare I didn't know if she had an intimate with Richard or not, but she was clearly going to do it, and that was enough for me. She said she loved me, but she left with another guy, planning to sleep with him. I had no intention of starting a family with such a woman or staying married to her. I turned off my phone, moved out of our apartment the next day, and drove to Austin, Texas, where I found several job openings on Facebook. I changed my status to single and posted a photo of a cheating couple I created using artificial intelligence, using online photos of them walking together and holding hands. I captioned it Ellie's new love, Richard Jones. She left me, and I filed for divorce, considering our marriage over. An hour later, when I checked, there were dozens of comments from friends shocked by my revelation. Several women shared their sadness over my loss and encouraged me to call if I wanted to talk. It's funny, but for the first time in months, I felt wanted, and I realized my life wasn't over because of my cheating spouse. Research reveals Richard's true nature. From some research, I found out Richard wasn't in the process of a divorce and actually loved his wife and children. He just enjoyed preying on unsuspecting women a little more. He reveled in corrupting wives and turning their husbands into cuckolds. This gave him a sense of power, the need to dominate these women and their husbands was his addiction. Ellie's Revelation Ellie was stunned when she found out Richard had been lying to her about everything. She made sure his wife found out about their affair and how he harassed all the women at work. There were going to be some upheavals in Richard's life in the near future. Divorce Court Drama 
Mr. Wills, where is your client? David had to be in court on the day of the divorce proceedings. The judge was furious when he didn't show up and asked his lawyer where he was. The lawyer said, I don't know, but I'm sure he'll be here soon. She called a 15-minute break and said that if he wasn't here, she would hold him in contempt of court. Joshua Wills, his lawyer, called David on his cell phone and soon realized David had no intention of attending the mandatory hearing. He told his lawyer he was stuck in traffic. When the judge returned, Joshua stood up and spoke to the judge. Your Honor, my client is stuck in traffic and is desperately trying to get here. Well, that's a shame. Today, I have other matters to attend to. Your client has been charged with contempt of court, and I am imposing a fine of $1,000. I have reviewed the case file and ordered three counseling sessions before the next court date within 60 days. Tell your client that if he does not attend counseling or appear in court, I will impose 30 days in jail and another fine. Do you understand my decision today? Yes, your honor, Joshua affirmed. He reprimanded his client and emphasized the importance of following the judge's orders. After waiving mandatory counseling, David agreed, stating he would comply if it facilitated the divorce's finalization. Consulting It was the first time Ellie had seen David since she made the regrettable decision to be with Richard. She ran up to him with outstretched arms, but he pushed her away and ignored her. After pulling herself together from a resulting crying fit, the counselor started the session. Ellie began, telling David how much she loved him and how sorry she was for not realizing her actions. She explained she had never had a night and returned home as soon as she understood what she was doing. She cried and begged him for forgiveness. When it was his turn to speak, David began with a question, Doctor, just to be clear, you expect complete honesty from both of us for these sessions to have any value, right? Yes, David, you both agreed to be completely honest, and this is a straightforward session. It's important that you both speak freely and honestly. Thank you, Doctor, David said, turning to Ellie and looking directly at her for the first time since she left on her journey. He felt his heart beat faster as resentment and suffering reared their ugly heads again. This is difficult for me, Ellie, and I hope you'll be honest. You say you didn't have an intim with Richard, nothing happened, and I should understand and forgive your actions. Am I entitled to this? Tears filled Ellie's eyes as she smiled and said, Yes, David, nothing happened. As soon as I read your note, I realized what I was doing and came home to you. Okay, I understand. But I know you, Ellie. You're not the type of woman who would just be with another man. I mean, you've never been unfaithful or that kind of woman. Do you agree? Of course not. I'm not unfaithful, and you know it, she said, reaching out her hand to David. He didn't take it, leaving it suspended until she withdrew it. I know you're not unfaithful, Ellie, but I also know you wouldn't get involved with another man if there weren't some connection or feelings there. Since I know you're not unfaithful, I know you have feelings for Richard, right? Ellie realized she would have to admit her feelings or that she intended to sleep with him. She said quietly, well, yes, but I don't love him. I've always loved only you. Yes, Ellie but this is the problem I have with this whole situation. Yes, I consider this a situation. Tell me, did you spend personal time with him? Did you have lunch or drinks together after work? Of course, we work together. Okay, that makes sense. So I'll take that to mean yes. Now, the truth, Ellie. Have you ever walked holding hands with him? Ellie could no longer meet his eyes and whispered, yes. Sorry. I couldn't hear you. Did you hold hands? Yes, but I didn't love him. You said it. I know you didn't love him. Tell me, did you ever passionately kiss him? Just that once, I swear. David couldn't explain what happened, but all his pain, anger, resentment, and humiliation found an outlet in tears. As he spoke, tears dripped from his face onto his shirt and knees. David was a big, strong guy who never cried, and when Ellie saw the tears, it had an impact she didn't expect. As the tears continued to flow, David looked directly into her eyes and calmly asked another question, Ellie, one last question. If I hadn't sent that note along with the lingerie you planned to wear for your lover, would you have slept with him that night? She didn't want to answer and nervously watched his tears continue to fall. 
After a moment, the doctor spoke, Ellie, it's important to find out everything now. You're in a safe place, and you shouldn't hold back. Please answer David's question. David, I love you, and I would never intentionally hurt you. But if you hadn't stopped me with that note, I would have made the worst mistake of my life and slept with him. But you saved me, and for that, I am eternally grateful, baby. We need to stay together. Turning to the doctor in tears, David said, Doctor, this is why I can't stay married. You see, she had serious intentions of sleeping with him. The actual act doesn't matter, intention is all that matters in my mind. If she thought about it once, I know she would do it again under the right circumstances. And I won't live with that hanging over my head for the rest of our years together. I'd always wonder if she still wanted him or if she was planning another session. No, she ended it when she got on that plane, knowing all along what she was going to do over the next three weeks. David attended the necessary sessions, and three months later, the divorce was finalized. However, it wasn't without constant calls and requests to stop the divorce and give her another chance. The calls from her father, sister, and their friends were all the same. They insisted he was being foolish because Ellie hadn't had a night with Richard. David tried to explain his feelings, but according to everyone, he should forgive her mistake and reconcile their marriage. They claimed she loved him, and he was being childish for not stepping forward like a man to take her back. After growing weary of their persistent arguments, he essentially told each of them to go to hell and asked them never to speak to him again. Following that, he took several contract jobs across the country, left town, and never looked back. Ellie continued to call and beg for forgiveness until he eventually had to block her number. He hoped she would learn from her actions and remain faithful in her future relationships. David's Revenge on Richard Almost a year had passed since that terrible day, but David hadn't forgotten about Richard. Working all over the country with no ties to home, he devised his revenge plan. Before leaving, he set up a dial-up connection to his home internet, granting him access to Ellie's computer. Knowing she habitually logged into her company's VPN to submit reports, he took advantage of lax security measures on her laptop. He remotely accessed her system still connected to the company's internal network via VPN. You have to love lazy support staff who care more about making their jobs easier than security, he thought to himself. Making an honest living this way, he shouldn't complain, but that was beside the point. He then opened her email and crafted an email to Richard embedding a rootkit in a link he was sure Richard would open. Purporting to come from Ellie, the email enticed Richard with a message like, Richard, take a look at this and let me know what you think. Unable to resist, Richard clicked on the link, activating the malware that swiftly infiltrated every server Richard could access, awaiting David's instructions. All Richard saw was an error message, as David had planned. The predator took the bait, granting David access to the company's inner sanctum. He erased all traces that the email came from Ellie and cleared the remote access logs on her laptop. When investigations ensued, they found no email, link, or record of any incident. Hopefully, the IT staff would overlook the incident amid their more pressing concerns. Waiting a week, David initiated his plan. Using a VPN and remote servers across eight countries, he installed programs on Richard's company's main server. Within hours, he gained access to their most sensitive files, downloading financial reports, HR data, engineering designs, and nearly patented designs worth millions to the company. Then, for his own satisfaction, David decided to have some fun with Richard. Through Richard's work computer, he signed him up for adult sites, including deep and dark web platforms. Using Richard's credit card and banking information without his knowledge, he registered him and set up a program to divert any messages from these sites into a hidden file only David could access. In this secret cache, David downloaded dozens of child images and videos, along with confidential company charts and engineering documents, initiating his Burn Richard campaign. Over the next month, using Richard's company email account, David sent documents to their top competitors, inquiring about payment releases to Richard's account. He then performed a thorough deletion of sent emails, a task he believed would erase all traces. Richard had been hired for his financial expertise rather than technical acumen, so like many new hires, he thought deleting emails and files would erase any trail. But any investigation would find the evidence easily enough. From Richard's computer, 
David began sending child photo to known cyber tip lines monitored by the FBI. Within a week, over a hundred incriminating images were in transit, sure to attract the FBI's attention. Simultaneously, as part of his plan, David paid one of his employees to plant a USB drive containing dozens of child images at Richard's apartment. It took them less than two days to sneak in and install the device, ensuring Richard would bear the consequences. Throughout the process, David was meticulous, employing VPNs, multiple remote servers, and his cybersecurity expertise to sever any links to himself. Ten days later, a team of six FBI agents stormed Richard's office during a meeting with the company president. They burst in waving guns, shouting FBI. No one moved as they swarmed the office. The scene was surreal, and the entire office staff stood frozen in fear as they watched the scene unfold, remaining speechless and immobile. We have a warrant for the arrest of Richard Jones and full access to your company servers. We are aware of some federal crimes. You will take us to your IT department immediately, the president said with a contemptuous look, then turned and led the two FBI agents to their IT department despite the president's irritated objections. The FBI seized the company's servers and all their data, resulting in the company being completely shut down. When this became known, their competitors quickly got involved and started calling their clients. Richard, single-handedly with my help, brought the company to its knees with his misdeeds, for which he was fired and sued by the company. Richard's federal case received widespread publicity. The company he worked for was in trouble and might not survive Richard's turmoil. The scandal destroyed the company's reputation and made Richard a national disgrace. He was found guilty of 200 counts of possession of child photo, wire fraud, corporate espionage, federal theft, and extortion. He received a minimum of 25 years in prison, with 20 years for good behavior. His wife divorced him, and his children would never have anything to do with him again. He lost everything when he tried to fool the wrong person. What do you think of our story today? I think the situation my husband is in is one of the worst imaginable. What's your opinion? Let me know in the comments. See you in the comments.